All right, welcome back all. This is Daz from Monorari Techniques. So up this week, we're going to be putting together a DCC power pack. I did a, ver a video some time ago on using ESUs, but this one we're actually going to build ourselves. Now, I had a little bit of fun with ChatGPT. If you know what that is, it's uh, artificial intelligence. So I, type I actually typed in to do an introduction for me. So this is what it came up with. So put <laughs> put in the description below what you think so it depends obviously what keyword you put in there so it says here so hey fellow model railroads welcome back to model Road techniques where we always on track for exciting DIY projects today we're going to delve into the world of digital command control with a focus on empowering up our locomotives join me as we craft customized DCC decoder power packs using essential components like 100 ohm resistors 2200 microfarad capacitors and a and a 1N4700 diode. Stick around and we'll discover why these elements are crucial for optimizing the performance of our cherished model, model railway. So comment below what you think of that. I think it's a little bit cheesy, but uh, it was a bit of fun. So anyway, enough of the wobble. Let's get into it. All right, so the, the basic three components we're going to be using for, for this quick little build for a power pack, that is a 2200 microfarad capacitor, very basic diode, so the 1N4007 version, 100 ohm, one quarter watt resistor. One of each is what you require of these. So we'll start with, this is the, the little guy that's been sort of made up here. So we've got the, the cathode side, which is the negative, and then all the other components go on the anode side. So you can see that you got the one with the cathode, which is the non-banded end to the anode of the capacitor, and then the, the cathode, which is the end that'll go out to the positive of the DCC decoder. So what we'll do, we'll quickly talk about each of these components and what they do individually. Okay, so the first, is we'll talk about that the 100 ohm resistor so so these resistors regulate the current flow preventing it from becoming overwhelming from the dcc decoder so this is very very important for you might have heard a term of called inrush current at startup so what that actually is the dcc system turns itself on and then an inrush of current goes to all your sound decoders and all your decoders and everything connected to the DCC bus so to speak and depending on how you've got circuit breakers set they can trip at this point so that's just obviously one way that the, the, the 100 ohm resistor works. So the capacitor is pretty well it's just liking it like a, a battery battery backup so to speak so we won't talk to too much of that. The primary role is to to smooth out the voltage fluctuations um, from dirty track um, in, intrafrog points and very other other reasons why we're, we're, we're doing this this project to get a battery backup. PCB Way offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining in a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. Then select your material, finish and other post-processing customization like PCB assembly where all the components are added. If you are new to PCBs, their professional review team will review your file and notify you once they are good to be manufactured. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Now, probably one of the most important of the three, I think, well, they're probably all as important as each other, but a very, very important is the, the diode. So the diode being a semiconductor, so to speak, is a device that essentially acts as a one-way switch for the current. So therefore it uh, allows the current to flow easily in one direction, but severely restricts the current from flowing in the opposite direction, which obviously can cause quite issues. All right, so here is the, the schematic here. So we're installing ours on a, a lock sound version 5 and as you can see I've just shown you the what the circuitry looks like now in my previous video we looked at 
actually using the ESU power pack. Now you can see there's a charge cable here. Obviously we don't have that circuitry here. So at this point, it's very important to, to note that ESU has suggested if you're gonna go down this route is you need to disconnect this in some shape or form when you're using the ESU lock programmer or you will do damage to your, your circuitry. So we'll move on from that, all the doom and gloom there. So it's very easy, it's just a matter of desoldering, programming your locomotive the way you want it and then solder it back up. So you can see that the very simple, you can see the very simple uh, connections there. Now, the 200 microfarad capacitor um, is, is quite large by itself. It's a lot larger than the small version of the power pack which I've used, but smaller than obviously the one for the larger uh, locomotive. So you do need to take that in consideration. Beauty of this this circuit, you're probably looking about five dollars maybe Australian to build one of these, compared to seventy eight dollars, seventy nine dollars here in Australia for the SU power pack. However, there's a little bit more work. Yes, a little more stuffing around regarding putting it together just to make sure you don't do any damage and making sure you've connected everything up but it's it's reasonably simple to do like about when we spoke before i'll point you down here so cv113 is where all this magic happens so this is the time that so this is the time that the dcc decoder is being bridged by the power pack so that's done via um, cv113 i set mine to the maximum which gives you a few seconds when you got the sound off and maybe a second and a half when the sound's running because obviously it's uh, requiring more power. The other one with lock sound version 5s, depending on which version you're going to use, so mine's a lock sound, uh, just a lock sound 5, not the micro, it's also going to be requiring us to set auxiliary power number 9 and I'll quickly go and show you that to you. So this is a copy of the the lock sound documentation so first thing we need to do is cv31 needs to be set to 16 cv32 to 0 now as i said just a normal lock pilot or sorry this is the lock sound um, we're going to be using auxiliary number nine so cv339 needs to be set to 31 i think the default is half that 16 or 15 or something similar so in summary so a keeper life system or the capacitors, you can liken them to what I'm going to say, like a little safety buffer. Your model trains from interruption of power at any given time. If you like me, you like nice smooth running trains. So it's just, as I said, that safety buffer that just allows them to keep chugging along and having a lot more fun with your model trains. And also with the keeper lives, I believe if you're having smooth running trains, you're not having to interact with the uh, the hand of God or the, the 050 as they call it and it makes a much more enjoyable experience running our train. Like all videos, I, I have three questions. So make sure you comment in the comment section below. I'll be really interested to see what people think of these little devices. So number one, would you use Keeper Lives? If so, what are your reasons for why you're using Keeper Lives? Well, on the flip side of that, what are the reasons why you will not use Keeper Lives? Number two, out there where you can actually make your own keeper lives. And number three, is there anything more that you'd like clarified within the keeper lives? I'll do my best to answer any questions that are posed, or I might put, what I might actually do is also I'll put some links below um, on some good resources that I came across when I was researching keeper lives. So thanks for watching this little breakdown on keeper lives or capacitors. If you found this video helpful, give it a big thumbs up. Obviously the YouTube algorithm loves the love of any sort of interaction. Comment below if there's any other videos you might like me to do or just general chit chat regarding the Keeper Lives. And like always, don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. And until next time, happy railroading.